Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Co-Host Takeover. I'm Tim. And no name. And together, we're two of the many co-hosts on this fair channel, uh, where we make our, uh, we're, we're just a bunch of immature folks. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I don't know why you're starting here, but thank you. Uh, and if you're a returning person, either to the VOD or the stream, we thank you. Uh, so, let's see, uh, No Name, how the hell have you been? You know, I've been alright. Uh, had a lazy day just reading a book, and uh, puts in with pro, you know, cleaning up around the house, so it's been relaxing. It's, it's, uh, it's been a good day. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, made pierogies, uh, some steak with like a lemon chive rice. It was mm, it nice. really put a bright spot on a otherwise really rainy day here in Minnesota. Uh, yeah. Then again, when isn't it in the spring? That's what we love. It's been it's been a lot lately, but I feel like it's lasting longer than it usually. Eh, I don't know. Maybe that's not true. It varies a lot. What are we off to do today in the Shadow Cursed Lands? We're gonna go to camp and then long rest because I think oh, we're I out of remember. short rests and yes. I'm out of spell slots. Yeah. Anybody need to talk? No, looks like no. Hmm? Oh, this scene. Playtime's over, pet. Ah, oh, I love this time of year. The dickheads start popping up wherever <laughs> you look. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil. And a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers, and you're getting them out. We were kind of already doing that anyway. Just with a bunch of gnomes. Right. Will your playmates wasting precious time? Let's see about getting. Next. <clears throat> oh. Closet. <laughs> so I, I posted the live message. Rada Sage posted the live message. But um, that that just means uh, everyone got to and great. <laughs> what did Alex do with a bunch of gnomes? Uh, put them in a tower. Apparently, we gotta go save them. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup, or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mazora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. What was that not inside? Be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, what a good roll. Boom. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Will's, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Yeah, Alex is keeping gnomes as uh, sex slaves. It's, it's truly gone far. He's built a whole fucking tower. Interesting. <laughs> now, Horrible. why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? There we go. Why am I not there? Or I able to help you? I think it's because we're all, uh, it was during a long rest. Bravo! Got it. Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done. Not before. Clause F 
Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearer's fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise. I love the and do you mind the persistent shadows? depiction of devils as lawful evil. Especially mm -hmm. hungry. They're all they're basically just lawyers. Mm -hmm. Lawyers with incredibly powerful binding magic. Hey, say hello, Sarah. How's it going? Uh, we, we got the spider lady in the chat for Sage. Oh, perfect. Oh, a lot of people uh, apparently have shit to stay. Or say. Well, let's see what Will has to say about his... Uh... For the two of us. Yeah. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the blade stands for. Such an asshole. The same thought crossed my mind. I'm only to hunt the infernal, the demonic, the horns. The heartless. But nowhere was it uh, depending on the decisions you make, uh, there's a warlock who joins your party, and you can cause him to violate the terms of his pact with the devil he's pacted with. And part of that uh, contract breach stipulates that his soul has to experience uh, a torment of all nine of the hells. And so because his soul was directly exposed to all the layers of hell simultaneously, it warped him and turned him partially uh, infernal. And so he's now kind of branded with the uh, the melted skin, the horns, the red eye. And uh, so like all the people he runs into have been just like, Jesus, fuck, what happened to you? Yes, unless Mazora actually fulfills her promise and sets me free. Uh, they have the magic to enforce the pacts uh, in this game. That's basically all that's different about devils. For sticking your neck out for me. I mean it. But I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can feel Mazora scheming, plotting. She won't let me go without making a fuss. Trust me on that. Then we know our mission. All roads converge at moonrise. They want violence, they want control, they want Baldur's Gate. Who better than Grand Duke Ravengar to surrender it? Who better than the commander of the Flaming Fist to dismantle its defensive? They will infect him, and the city's guardian will become its ruin, unless we put a stop to it. Guess we gotta put a stop to it. Yeah. I was 11 when the council <laughs> spotted and slayed an assassin who stalked farther from the shadows. I was 13 when she brought word of a goblin warband advancing on Rivington. Her keen scouting saved I will say it, one of my favorite parts of this game is the, the animated dialogue. Is beyond question. Mm -hmm. She's as steady as Tears Heartbeat, as upstanding as the Sword Mountains. Which at isn't too Tats. different from a lot of AAA games, but right. it's abundance and it's varied outcome to like conversation or like the the branching dialogue trees mm -hmm. like. It, it, it's rather robust. He was 13 when this happened. Do I want to know how old he is now? He's like... I think he's in his 20s, actually. What's on your mind? Yeah, I think he's like mid to late 20s. 26, 27, maybe. Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets. What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? Look, Will's happiness is my happiness. I'd sooner see myself a Lemia than him. But it's a bad That's how it's pronounced. The devil. You never win. Not ever. I think it's she's saying it wrong. It's Lemur. <laughs> it's Lemur? <laughs> oh, it's oh, probably that Aussie thing. Us. Like we No, it's Lemur. Or like, however she said it's right. You might be a little naive in the ways of the world, but I see promise in you. Ambition. Uh, I saw the uh, the trailer for 
was what is it um where the winds or something mm -hmm. um that one looks really cool i really love the uh hype or like the uh the sheer speed and weight all of the combat seems to have that it makes it really seem like it's going to have a rather robust and epic kind of combat style and feel epic as in like the grand and almost mythic sense not just goblin trash there are powerful people in the worm's thrall whoever's waiting for us at moonrise towers controls it all but if we can take that control from them imagine the power we'd wield oh my god he wants to be the absolute mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just the thing. If we control the parasites, then we can order them not to change us. I think that was All yesterday, Sarah. With none of the tentacles. The Sony or state of play. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity here. If we can control the tadpoles, we can keep ourselves safe and liberate the world from this evil. Dude, it's not often the he's not gonna like if I say it like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he does dislike it and thinks it's rather uh, precocious. We live long enough to find this uh, moonrise, but I'm feeling optimistic. Yeah, bad idea, bud. Uh, anyone else got anything to say about the devil appearing in camp? Soon to take Carla. Seems not. She should make every moment as rich as the last. Fight viciously, roar loudly, step boldly. She must make herself known. Uh, there's going to be quite a few over the next week and a half. Summer Games Fest being a kind of E3 replacement nowadays. Okay. Well, it's, we're living in a, a heyday is upon us. of game news. Uh, any uh, announcements you're looking forward to, Sage, or for that matter, uh, Sarah, do you have any games that you've been kind of like, you are in development that you're aware of that have gotten announced recently? Soil and rock, root and leaf. It is a living being. Or hoping to see an announcement for it, rather. boy, with the forest itself in his eyes. His name is Thaniel. I've met him in my meditations, but since the curse was unleashed, I have not felt his presence, but if we can find him, we can break the curse. If you learn anything of the shadow fell, I can't be exact, unfortunately. Time and the shadow curse won't have been kind to any traces that would have been left behind. A living witness is unlikely, I'll admit. He is? Then I must see him. I will go to see him at once. What? Good shit. Halzen is now going to meet us at the last light in. Got it. Uh, my way. Yeah, what do you got to say? I know well the pain of seeing your life's hourglass running empty. Oh yeah, both Carlock and Will are uh, the grains Carlock and Gale are dying. Inexorably through your fingers. Carlock's fate may be ordained, but her actions are not. She will make each breath count. You can be sure of that. We could listen to Shadow, I guess. Karlak. She can finally seek out the touch of another, only to be told she might not have much time left. Oh, that's a lot of, uh... Oh, shit, that's right, we found a Night Orchid. Rings a bell. Yes. Why? Oh, hell. You didn't pick that by hand, did you? They're deadly poisonous. Joking. They're so <laughs> and beautiful. Thank you. Summer Games Fest is hard to say, uh, except uh, Alan Wake 2 DLC. To give you in return, I'm afraid. Yeah, I can't. Uh... Can I mute it? No, I don't think so. Um, I can't. Well, uh, perhaps I can come up with something later. See. All the same. I'm really hoping that Alan Wake drops. Soon after a fellow servant of the Night Singer would surely I be an ally more. to me under most circumstances. But something doesn't add up. 
I'll need to see where his Oh yeah, Catherick Thorm is a supposedly a worshipper of Lady Shar, same as Shadowheart, only he's the leader of this undead army that's like killing everything or something. Mm -hmm. Um We aren't dear friends now, if that's what you're asking. But I trust we can all sleep a little more soundly in camp now. You have an interesting definition of friendly, but yes. <laughs> Alright, I think we can sleep now. I'm really hoping we get a, um, a shadow drop day of. Ooh. Yeah, that would be amazing. Although I need to make space on my Xbox. That is a rather absolute is strong oh. here. I'm getting stronger. Are you getting a guide or guardian? I trust vision? you come yep. to your senses. We have to work together, or the absolute will enthrall us both. I cannot keep this up indefinitely. But it's good to see you're making progress. You took an unexpected route here. You did a brave thing, saving those people in the grove. Not everyone would have helped. It just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave with hardly a breath between them. I to a point why game devs twist. make females in games the way that Each they but I hate it as it makes things invitation. unrealistic yeah the order for your it's like okay given many I get already. that like uh like I mean where am I supposed to find a hot GF that's got massive horns like that like that's hmm. unrealistic standards no but, um but yeah I can I I kind of uh I think they've trended a bit better in more recent years, but it's still kind of like there's kind of like one way that most female characters are going to be painted, and it's those uh boobs and butt, boobs butt and legs for days. Yes, but the orders are oddly erratic. As if the Absolute cannot make up its mind. I don't fully understand. In any case, the Absolute knows you carry me with you now. It wants to retrieve me. Bendy the Cage and Little Nightmares 3. Ooh, Little Nightmares 3. That's going to be really good. Delayed until next year. Oh. I stole it from Blackith. Her continued rule depends on it. As long as the Absolute exists, I am trapped within the prison. I can only control the power from him. We must make sure Blackith never gets her hands on the prison. Unfortunately, they are both dedicating more and more resources to retrieving it. The task ahead is monumental. But we're all that stands between victory for the Absolute and freedom. This is not just about you and I anymore. It has become far bigger than us. You must infiltrate Moonrise Towers, discover the secrets of the Absolute. If you're watching I'm everything I'm doing, you know I've said this, I, I had this conversation so many and times, and always on. that's the plan. Come on. Do not let my efforts be in vain. Hey, Afternoon Tune, how's it going? We're just talking about uh, the Sony State of Play. Uh, what games are we expecting or hoping for to get an announcement soon? <sighs> the journey to 200,000 channel points continues. <laughs> it's going to be one hell of a stream when uh, we finally put those live. The dog wags his tail. A small bag clenched between his teeth. 
he gives in and surrenders his find to you. He gave me somebody's shoes. Scratch's oh. tongue lolls out happily, what, his tail camp? wagging even faster. No, very nice. Yeah, Scratch gave me somebody's shoes. <laughs> Thanks, Scratch. Alright, um... Animali, isn't it? Friendship? Animal friendship? Doggo, you're keeping Doggo. Oh, yeah, Scratch is staying. And same for Elbear. Yeah, dog. Uh, we rescued the dog in the forest. We, his owner was dead, and so we uh, told him to come to our camp, and then we just kind of kept him around. We also rescued an owl bear cub uh, because we killed his mom, and then the goblins tried. Uh, Ooh, or no, wait, goblins killed his mom. Keep, yeah. How the shit do I get to that chest? I think we blew up the ladder. Oh no. Oh, can Carlock throw you when you're a halfling? I think Carlock can just jump there. I forgot that she's like a... She's Captain Leaps. Well, I'm, now that I have this shillelagh, my strength job, is decent for jumps and throwing too. Oh yeah. Oh. I forgot strength of staring is really fun. Luminous Gloves. Wearer deals radiant damage. They receive two turns of radiant orb. Nice. Okay. Um, I have frequent radiant damage, but my current gloves are... Better? Oh, just give me Hail of Thorns. No. They're not better. Then. To you they go. Owl bear cub? Is that what you said? Yes. Uh, the the offspring of an owl bear. A trap. Time to dance. Slow down. Ah. So the Harpers were torturing farmers. Trying to figure out Kethric Thorm's uh, yeah, I'm actions. Yeah, sorry back there. I didn't realize he wasn't grouped with me. Oh, never mind. Ooh. One bonus to armor class while obscured. So when, I think that's in semi or partial or full darkness. Did you guys or see the state of play uh, outside the trailers I sent you? I did not. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, Tales of Kenzera Zao's price is being lowered uh, to less than 15 bucks on Switch and soon as all uh, soon all platforms. My current game of the year highly recommended that uh, indie game support. Oh, nice. I, I haven't heard much about it, but I'll look after it or look at it after the stream. That that. I'm always up for more indie games. They're short, they're sweet, they often have a unique uh, and mm -hmm. beautiful artistic perspective. 100%. Not mean to pick up play long. Why not? Oh, okay. In-game in kind of animal or animal based off an actual animal. It's based off of, uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, there's a magical beast called an owl bear. Um, that it's a bear, but it has a beak, uh, talons instead of claws, and, uh, feathers. Do you think so it's, it's, like, a lot of that stuff is based off mythology from somewhere. Yeah. Do you think that one is, or is that... That one I'm not 100% sure, creation, but... but I, yeah, I don't know. There's often... background, but sometimes, like, stop picking everything up, Corbin. The animal hybrid concept is definitely one that's far from old uh and, and i think shows up in a lot of cultures where animals yeah, are revered true. in any more uh aspect than a just a a food supply right yeah that might be worth a look oh 
Oh, oh, where'd you fuck it out there? Um, before we go up here, mm -hmm. I think there was a. Is there a dead end down here? No. Not There's a path sure. off to the left, but it goes at a lot of different places. I'm wondering if we can even get up to this uh, next one. Too high. Tickets, ballistas, siege engines. A little old fashioned, too. Hundred years? More? Is it just Prolock and I that got up here? Yep, just the strengths. <laughs> you know, we could pass around my shillelagh that gives you 19 strengths. Ah. Uh, Should I do that? We might not need to. Uh, if we are going like a... Because I don't think this path leads to anywhere we haven't been. Cause there is this little area up here yeah i see and then this little uh landing over here other than that we might be able to just go back yeah afternoon tunes on a three stream streak stream streak there we go three th stream streak three stream streak Three stream streak. Ah, uh, there we go. Three stream stroke. I think Tim has a massive library in his head where he keeps all this random game knowledge. I do appreciate it, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait. There's a path. There's, oh. There's this path up here to the left. I think that's back up towards where the uh, the ambush was uh, on, when during our drider escort. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh... Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers Peter picked, or Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the peck of pickled peppers Peter Pickled picked? Peter Piper picked... Oh, God damn it. I was so close. So close. Are we going south or through the wall? Oh shit, we can walk through it. I don't yeah. think it's time to go. Actually, I think there might be a waypoint up here. Ominous. Oh yeah, the autosave? Yeah. You got so far. <laughs> yeah, it uh Sage and I we we have very different pools of uh knowledge, but when we when you get us together, it's like a repast. And then Sage and Ulysses and uh no name, we all have such uh like uh, a varying knowledge mm -hmm. of like a a, a, a very fun I think that and, and all of us all of us really ho are here that work as hosts on this show I mean not work but oh shit there's Roland the fuck's he doing here At the ready. remember the uh, tiefling wizard oh yeah whose uh, siblings were kidnapped and he's just like super salty about that He summon these shadows, or is he an ally? He's fighting these shadows. Okay. Ah. Oof. Oof. Oh, come on, lay off rolling. Come on, guys. 
This this is not fair. I can't get close enough to heal him. Oh, he's just barely close enough. Wait, where are they? No clue. Target That's... is too close. Don't think of it as free labor, Tim. Uh, no, this is, uh, I, I gotta say, I do, I do really enjoy streaming on this channel with y'all. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun to get to play video games with your friends, talk about a, a variety of interesting topics, a variety, uh, interesting people, and, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's all recorded for posterity, too. So what's <laughs> not to love? Yeah, he, uh, went invisible, so it's... Twenty-two days until the Elden Ring DLC, right, Sarah? D wait, does the does the Elden Ring DLC come out on the fucking Solstice? Uh, Solstice. Um, Solstice. Solstice. Yeah. Uh, Solstice. Unless the Solstice is different this year. Nope. It's the day after. You should have really had that on before, Roland. Right? Oh, Ain't wasting a turn. I see it. I see it. Down in the bottom. Boom. Hey, hey, hey. Great shot of do your thing. Oh, no. Hell yeah. God damn it all. I could do nothing right. Not a oh, damn yeah. thing. I just failed a constitution save. I'm supposed to be saving Cal and Leah. Instead, I found myself cornered by shadow fiends and in need of rescue from you, of all bloody people. Or well, not hard enough. I failed Cal and Leah again. Be on your way. He did take out a pretty big number of those things. Just the ravens with one health, though. Oh, yeah, I forgot about those. Oh, Astorian is on the way. Did we cover all the other places around here? Almost. Close almost makes it seem like even more of a Berserk reference. <laughs> I'm surprised From Software didn't release it during the Eclipse, honestly. Uh, it, you know, if, if they could have. Oh, I use shields. Both of us use one, but I've got a pretty nice shield. Blazing Retaliation and all. Um, mine is. Oh, plus one yeah. stealth. The other one had some woads and scenario strike. You've All got the wood woad shield. True. And a shillelagh, which is very befitting my nature druid. Or my nature cleric.
See that Deadpool and Wolverine popcorn bucket? What? Is it is it gonna be like the Sarlacc pit? Or no, not the Sarlacc pit, the um the, the sandworm. Sandworm. Yeah yeah, it uh it says hold my beer to the sandworm. That And I, if you told me I mean I would maybe believe it if someone told me it was designed before that, but I honestly think it was in response to it. Well because they know they could become a meme so easily. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I found a waypoint. Oh shit. I found a waypoint. But we were supposed to go to Last Light Inn. To hear about Thaniel. Or something. Well, there's a treasure chest in that we're building up ahead. Oh shit. Uh, I think that house here. might be haunted. Yeah, I think you're right, but I kind of want to do it. Someone's coming. Someone new. Maybe they want to play. Hey, list merit started a conversation. I was the last one in. Him, I'm sending you a picture. I scared you. I saw it. But he beats me at hide and seek. Will you play with me? Oh my God. Why? Designed by Deadpool. <laughs> That's great. Right? I don't know anyone called that. Don't ask me again. Yes, you do. Now play with me. I have a mummy, a daddy, and a doggy. They'll be back in a while, but you're here now, and I want to play. They don't need names. They just need to be mummy and daddy and do what I want. Now play with me, or they'll be angry. <laughs> The boy doesn't like these questions because he has no real answers and perhaps no real family. Did we pick up the kid? I'm not going anywhere. I like it here. Now play with me or else. All right. I'll hide and you seek. Find me, and you win. Then you lose. <laughs> Get ready. That's not ominous at all. Right? The commercial for it is popcorn butter slowly dripping down the face. Oh my god. Supposed to find me? You weren't supposed to win. Ring of mental inhibition. Good idea. You're smarter than some playmates I've had. They always tried to leave before I was done with them. Try to find me again, but my family will be looking for you at the same time, so don't get caught. What? We're not supposed to attack them, we're supposed to find... Where is he? Oh, he's right there. What? Ah, uh, okay. I don't get it, we found him. I think he wasn't gonna play fair with us. Oh. So, uh, hear a little boy say mommy, all I can think of is the Doctor Who episode. Yeah. 
Oh my god, that Call one was fucking me. horrifying. Um, Call me. So that kid is, uh, like, he looks kind of like a tiefling, but he looks like he, he's, uh, like, this whole area is the Shadow Curse Lands. So for a hundred years, the land's been blighted with this curse that warps anything living in it to be this horrible facsimile of life that is uh, kind of like uh, twisted uh, to shadow the or to shadows and the god of loss. So they're they're intent on like killing and consuming all life. Except this little kid is just walking around here, and he seems to know Thaniel, this nature spirit that uh yeah. is uh like who we've been seeking out because when these lands were cursed a hundred years ago the nature spirit that in personifies these lands went in uh like it, it hasn't been able to be contact since so oliver might be the, the kid might be some sort of corrupted nature spirit yeah Hey Ulysses, how's it going? It was two part or two, oh, but I really enjoyed it. Some people, or even though I can see why some people didn't like it. Nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, was that a tenant episode? No, that was Eccleston. Eccleston. Can't loot daddy. It's a dead gets Yankee warrior here. Was it Eccles? Yeah, uh, I I could see that. Because uh... it was the t first time you met uh, Jack Harkness, and that was Rose and Eccleston. Yeah, that would have been uh the empty child. Yeah, that yes. would have been ninth ninth doctor. Oh, I didn't mean to cast Shillelagh, I meant to use my Shillelagh. Oh goodness. Astarian. Carlock, where the heck are you? Oh, incapacitated. Yeah. I'll allow it. You're dying or something. Did you guys know officer chairs can uh, office chairs can explode and kill you? Oh yeah. Uh, it's like the uh, the piston underneath the chair is like under an incredible amount of pressure and just occasionally a chair will malfunction and just like send that um that pneumatic uh kind of that like that tube that's under pressure just right through you right up yeah you guys watching the news too i hear it tanked ratings wise i have i haven't watched it but uh sarah what? i i think sarah have you seen it All the five doctors blend oh, together in two years. I, I thought it. I thought it's. It's been a bit clumsy, but it's definitely not been Don't waste terrible. Step. It's just getting review bombed because the doctor is like a gay man now. I don't know. Maybe I have more willingness to forgive some of its clumsy things but every doctor like every every season's doctor has a clumsy start um that some people don't like and it you know it changes you did i don't know most, though, so I'll let you go here second prize yeah i can i can i can definitely it's not the same as others it's a it's a new run of the show and it's not just a new doctor yeah uh, but i've i've had fun with it i thought it was good sci-fi 
concepts and episodes and like anything like that every season is going to be uh, incon somewhat inconsistent with that many different writers to writing different things and not knowing what each other are writing during production necessarily. I mean, maybe they do that. And the idea of having to keep the show just kind of going means that you can, you can only write such a uh, in such a way as that things kind of continue and that a relative status quo is maintained. Mm -hmm. Because it is one of those long-lasting series where it's lasted so long that uh, I, I, there's no real foreseeable end to it. They kind of uh, right. superseded the uh, 12 uh, incarnations uh, well, limitation. Well, that was like fairly recent. Canon. Yeah, that was Isn't kind of, I think, uh, think, I think that was introduced like with Eccleston or uh, if not Eccleston, it for sure, Tenet. It might have been Tenet. It might have been during the movie, like slightly before the two of them, too. I don't remember. Oh, here's that goblin I sent into the woods because it was going to send the, the wolf in or the hyena. Uh. Big fight he was. All his hyena cages are empty. Service I've generally only watched black and white who and it was extremely inconsistent back then too. Yeah, that, that's oh, one thing yeah. that is consistent with it is its inconsistency. Yeah. Uh, when you have something where like how many of the writers do you think from classic who are even still alive? 50% or lower. Yeah, there's no way it's a, a significant uh, number. I mean, or I mean, no way it's like a majority. Right. I do think Whitaker bad, though, uh, with her story writing. Um, that is one thing I did see kind of uh, relatively consistently. Yeah, didn't, yeah, she really didn't get... Um... Like, the, she could have done better with better scripts, and she didn't get something that... That she could do a lot well with. It felt like they were trying to do, like, just a... Almost tenant -y energy doctor with her, and I didn't think it worked. Yeah, no, absolutely, I... Uh, let's see. Who has changed up his lore and retcon stuff more than some comic universes? Yeah, totally. It's it's very much a rule of convenience in the writers' room for that show. And I think I think that if you can roll with it and and accept it, I, I don't. I think it works for them. On and uh, part and parcel of uh, Doctor Who's thing is time travel and. Uh, the impermanence right. of time outside of uh, fixed points. And even then, they've uh, showed fixed points to be kind of something that have been, like, mutable. With like, the, the yeah, destruction of Gallifrey master. was seen as kind of like a flashpoint in the world. And, uh, uh, but even that has kind of, like, been like, all right, well, now, Gallifrey, what, was it destroyed or was it stored in a painting? Right, and then... Just, and then there's destroyed or... Um, Fuck yes. Is it, is it frozen in time and and yeah? Is it is it frozen time. outside of time or is it frozen in time or is it just stored in a pocket dimension or? Uh, there's a, I feel like a lot of things that kind of uh, have that kind of. Uh, mutability to them. Not that it's a, a fault point for the show. It's really like watching during different eras of the show, and uh, the, the, as canon is gently overwritten or superseded by what is currently happening in the show, right. I think it really. Uh, uh, and they kind present of... some of those like rewrites and, and backfills and things as like the new Doctor. Like, oh no, I used to think that, but now I. No better. Uh, th yeah, that's uh, Ulysses brings up a great point. Uh, part of is, is that they'll never permanently get rid of anything. How many times have the Daleks died out and then come back with a shrug? Right. Uh, yeah, and Gallifrey was written out and then came back uh, as part of like a movie. Uh, and then there's like the Cybermen were completely dealt with. How many times? 
Yeah, seriously. But because some men are, are like, I feel like as the show wanes in, uh, or like as it, it rather not wanes, as the show entertains newer audiences, it feels like it has the license uh, to kind of go back and retread old ground. And because part of that is that like there's new writers too. And so like there's like a whole new staff of writers on the show that haven't got a shot at uh, doing Daleks or Cybermen. Um, right. And so they, they want to do a crack at them. And that's why we've seen so many different iterations of them that aren't just like, a, a, but they're, they're like rather unique almost because like sometimes like uh like the cybermen are seen as like far more pitiable or like they have like a noble kind of take or like what if we did a cyberman versus dalek kind of thing yeah but i've also not seen it in uh since the tail end of the uh matt smith days yeah i would recommend at least checking it out i had I had issues with the writing for Capaldi's stuff too. I think it wasn't up to what he was capable of, just like Whitaker. Um, but yeah, I think that there's value to checking out the um, checking out, you know, an episode of the two or two of the new one. Handy. Would you say it's worth going back and just watching things chronologically? Oh, okay. <laughs> I killed him as he's fallen. That, that was that was phenomenal. It's amazing. Um, I have watched it all. I don't know that you. I don't, maybe look up a list of you know two episodes per season of the it? Capaldi times. <laughs> that bad, eh? <laughs> no, it's just not necessary. Like there weren't a lot of permanent things. It was yeah. Cybermen what, versus what Daleks has been done. The doctor, I feel like it was the Doctor processing and avoiding a lot of the like trauma and grief that has happened over the last however many seasons, which like is good and important, and then makes the filler or like monster not filler but monster of the week episodes just feel so much more trivial yeah uh cybermen versus daleks has happened uh a few different times i think i think there was also a yeah. cybermen uh teamed up with daleks and then there's mm -hmm. been like what if the daleks Everyone attack this thing or the doctor at one point and that's the thing with time travel is that like it's very very infrequent that we see anything truly erased or eschewed yeah. with the show there's always room for a new writer or a new idea to be like or even just like what if this doctor had to deal with cybermen v dollars right totally they all respond to it differently there was uh um i went to last light in yeah uh, there was a companion called Bill with um, the Capaldi Doctor, who was some of some of that Doctor's best stuff was that Andron, I think, or at least from what I remember. Um, that. Um, That they had some some good, uh, what's it called? Cybermen storylines, but like a, one of the fun things about Bill was as someone who's threat like, you know, oh these are cy like dealing with the big threats, but always unaware of them. It's like wait, these are Cybermen. What are Cybermen? These are Daleks. What are Daleks? There's a very. Uh, fun space to play in of the doctor traveling with someone who doesn't know all the stuff after so many long-term companions okay oh no oh we leveled up oh we sure did <laughs> I 
feel like Cybermen versus Daleks uh, have in constant. Uh, when when yeah. will they make a canine that doesn't look like a box on wheels? Oh, they're never going to. I think it's uh, idiocy or... Uh, it, it, yeah, they're gonna make it one of the busting dynamic dots. <laughs> oh my dynamics. god. I'm surprised they haven't had kind of a Boston Dynamics type dog, kind of like that uh, Black Mirror episode. Yeah. Where torches protect more. Freedom of movement to keep people out of stun or banishment. Um, I think, freedom of I, I think freedom of movement might be at least for the first four fall spell. I picked up Long Strider because you can apply it to everyone in your party, and it's just a wonderful oh, thing to have. Even in the 80s, 90s, there's not a lot of TV in general that holds up very well. Civil War 2 is literally unwatchable because of the old tapes were thrown away and we just don't have those episodes anymore yet. And some of them were caught in fires and because they were stored exclusively on physical copies that were just stuffed in warehouses or the tapes degraded because of uh, conditions in the atmosphere or whatever the fuck. And you need to develop a tolerance for ancient TV or have grown up in that era. Yeah, there's definitely a kind of... A, it's it's like playing older video games right it's, if, if you they, don't have the nostalgia for it already it's not going to be the same and like or like a like a passion for the particular thing that you're trying to go back like if you really like Faerunian lore or um D, D lore in general or baldur's gate the, you could probably go back and get a lot out of the baldur's gate one and two games um but Unless you have that drive to see them through and experience it firsthand, you're not going to want to go and, like, uh, see it. You're not going to want to kind of sit through that, because by uh, comparison to, like, uh, like modern games, it is slower. It's quieter. There's not as many things kind of helping to paint this cohesive picture of what's going on in the world. There's not, like, cutscenes like this. Yeah. Some of those old Who episodes have been re uh, recreated in animation because the audio tracks for them survived. Oh, nice! Nice! Uh, wasn't Baldur's 1 Gate uh, kind of considered shitty even when it first came out? Yeah, Baldur's Gate 2 is considered the better of the two, uh, specifically with the addition of the DLC. Without Daniel, no. And I don't know how I can find him without speaking to this man. If he was able to escape the Shadowfell, then it mustn't have managed to consume his spirit. Well, not all of it anyway. We need right, to start. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 have some bad writing, and I say that as someone with a lot of talent scroll ship. Something to trigger him. Yeah, the uh, memory, the item. longer the series went on, I think, uh, just as having like read kind of overviews of how the story goes, it's like, yeah, in the context of like old D and D novels, it's got really bad writing. Uh, compared to especially some of like the Dristor novels or like um, the Traveler series, but like uh, I don't disagree, there's you, my friend. Uh, and, oh, and the gameplay does suck. Yeah, so it's it's you really have to be going into it as someone who's just like, oh, man, I really wish I had all the context for what happened in Baldur's Gate Three because they do provide some context, but. I think you're better off finding one of those uh, lore videos where a YouTuber has a nice script put together with all of the the highlights and stuff. He keeps saying Daniel's name. He must know more. Okay, but like, we just we just found that other guy, and that seemed to know Daniel. Can we talk to you about that? Or are you gonna be in the? If I go to camp. Are you gonna be there? Just skip it and play too. One is so unnecessary, all the actually interesting bits are in two. Okay. 
So that's a good tip for anybody uh, who has the uh, urge to go play an absolutely ancient game uh, that aged poorly even compared to some of the other games of its era. Uh, oh yeah, Sarah. Owl bear cub. See? It's a bear that has distinctly owl features. Uh, that is one kind of uh, thing that gets utilized a lot in Dungeons and Dragons is that uh, the kind of animal hybrids uh, uh, typically formed through some magic. Why uh, owl bears are considered a magical creature because uh, there there is something either in the chaos of the Feywilds or through the tinkering of wizards. Well, uh, and sometimes there's other unique cases, but usually they're magic experimentation or chaotic magic from the Feywilds uh, that kind of create them. And then, of course, they can breed because you know they, they just lay eggs because they're birds, but any graphics in early 3D games almost universally do not hold up either. There's the rare gem like Ooh. Jet Set Radio that holds up because it's an art style or Nintendo stuff, but most things that of that don't really. Yeah, because a lot of them, for the time, are uh, trying to, uh, kind of trying to pursue this realism to them. They were trying to make them seem realistic instead of going for something more stylized that kind of holds up because... Yeah, even in a more modern iteration of it, you're still trying to go for that visual aesthetic. But if you're like trying to go and play like the older Call of Duty games that were trying to be hyper realistic, you're gonna have a bad time unless you really like games about World War II. <laughs> um, where the shit do we go now? Lift the Shadow Curse, punish the wicked. Wake up, Art Kala. I didn't realize I wasn't in. So it looks like we've done everything on the eastern portion of this map now. That means we can go to Rythwind Town. I like realism, but older realism-based games definitely show their age, unless you mod them, yeah. ever living fuck out of them. That's why I think, uh, like, uh, the Elder Scrolls and Fallout games tend to age a bit better because they were made to be modded. Uh, the Witcher games, also to a degree, uh, were made to be modded, and so they uh, they were able to have those graphic overhauls that add more modern graphic features, like uh, enhanced lighting. Um, like uh antriosophic filtering or uh like there's uh enhanced particle effects uh projected textures that kind of shit um and i i think that definitely adds a lot to those games though i think with bethesda games uh like elder scrolls or fallout 3 and 4 um the modding to kind of add and pad or repair the game in some instances is kind of necessary like, have you played Skyrim without the unofficial player, like, uh, patch? It's, it's, it, there's so many goddamn bugs. And a lot of people say that that's the charm of Bethesda games. But I think that that is a cop-out to mediocrity. <laughs> I think that you can be amused by the bugs. Like, I, like, you can be amused by the bugs, and that doesn't mean that it's okay that they're there. That's what I say to the people who say that. Is like, yeah, I get that bugs can be amusing. Like Again, somebody walking into a wall, a turning and facing you and having a conversation while in mid-stride against a rock that they're stuck on. Okay, that could be funny in certain contexts. Well, but like, the, like textures missing in dungeons, that's yeah, not excusable. The, um, what are they called? The trolls that would just like... Oh, the giants that would, like, hammer you, and if they killed you, you'd get launched into space. That's a fun Oh, bug. I was thinking of the, the... I saw a troll just suddenly do, like, a somersault. Um, or, like, a cartwheel. But a helicopter cartwheel and just fly off into space. Oh, nice. And I, uh, I've seen other videos of that, so it's definitely not the only time it's happened. Like, that was fucking funny when it happened, and also... It would have been a better fantasy game had it not happened. It's uh, like Bethesda game has become its own sort of sub-genre beyond whatever genre it is. It's a Bethesda game first. 
Yeah, and uh, I, I think Bethesda cool. games ultimately do have a lot of cool exploration uh, aspects to them, and they have a lot of potentially rich lore, depending on how much of it you're willing to seek out in their games. You are still um, necessary. Uh, uh, Sage says hyperrealism definitely has its place. I wouldn't want Alan Wake 2 to be too ca uh, cartoony, for example, but even at that, it's hyper stylized yeah. at the same time. You've got to have some other special thing in your art direction other than just realistic or realism. Yeah, that's 100% yeah. true. Um, they have, they went very uh, well into the like noir vibe and then changing it to the isolation of a forest you know Here they they the grand mason had many different and lies exposed uh sarah says hey tim you know what my favorite game is skyrim some games can handle being glitchy but not all uh i i actually did my senior project in high school on making a mod for skyrim it got like 50 downloads it was a player housing mod where i made a world space similar to blackreach on a much smaller scale uh, and tried to make kind of like an outdoor house in the wilderness, but subterranean. Uh, and it really kind of uh, showed me the limitations of the engine that Skyrim was working with and how all the more impressed I was uh, at their ability to make what they did with the limitations that they had of, for the software that they were using. Mm. Um, sometimes I wondered what it is I don't see in Skyrim. I really have tried. I, I just have always been a huge fan of high fantasy and I've always been a yeah. really huge fan of exploration in video games. Like, my first big video game that I got into was Champions of Norath. And that has, like, a randomly generated dungeons that, like, give the game incredible amounts of replayability. Uh, and that was based off of EverQuest, which led me to playing World of Warcraft, which has an absolutely massive world. 25 years of lore, or 30 years of lore at this point. And yeah. not all of it is good, but there's a lot of it so much so that when you first invest in it or like jump into it you can get we lost got in a trap door it. over here trap door shit for me my first mmo at least and probably my first fantasy game that wasn't like a lord of the rings tie-in was runescape runescape yeah that that is another uh the like one free to play that... on your browser one yeah, uh, there's a that one was a really good uh, gateway drug to MMOs, I think, yeah. because it was accessible. It was uh, kind of straightforward in what it expected of you. Mm -hmm. The heroes of might and magic. Of humor, but not a ton of like world lore unless you went searching for it. Yeah. That's curious. Uh. Uh, Ulysses says the Heroes of Might and Magic uh, games are a great example of how old graphics can look great. Two is a beautiful pixel art, and three is stylized in 3D that works well even today. Four was a generic 3D and killed the franchise. Uh, yeah, that that's kind of like how, uh, uh, if, if anyone's familiar with the Trine trilogy, or it was supposed to be a trilogy, but then they had to make a fourth game because of just how bad the third one was. It, they tried yeah. going 3D, which a shoot... Oh, shit. What? <laughs> now we have to disarm these. Historians got it. For a chest that had almost nothing in it. I couldn't get into WoW. I was more of a RuneScape person as it was free to play. They did have an option that gained more lore and was uh, whatnot to it. Yeah. Uh, the weird Lovecraftian DLC that won me over for Skyrim. Oh yeah, that, like I definitely downloaded it day one. But the it's DLC crazy. where you get into like um like Hermaeus or, or Hermea Mora is like the god of knowledge, oh, and he's yeah. like this Lovecraftian knowledge from another plane of existence where the gods reside, and uh, or specifically his plane of existence because all gods have their own like realm or something. Uh, and oh, you want to give it a shot, disarming one of these. I have no uh, trap disarm kit. I think it should magic pockets to you. It will not unless I have oh. one. Oh, Car Carlock has thieves down. No, that's not a trap disarm. Okay. Um. Uh, how do I how do I split it? I think you should be able to right click it. Uh, yeah, I can only send to. I can't. I split think. The stack right now. You, if you stay we in just... the center, I think we're fine. Soldier. Right. You would. Hey. Yeah. 
Heroes of Might and Magic. One, though, it, it'll, it's so ugly it'll turn you to stone. Okay, that's fair. Uh, like, even Warcraft, I suppose, to this day, like, I don't really play it as much because it is one of those things that's kind of a time sink to play a game that never ends. Mm -hmm. But it it does have its charm. I thought the world, the lore was really robust, and, it, and a lot of it was inspired by Dungeons & Dragons, which ultimately kind of was a gateway into playing Dungeons & Dragons in the right. uh, capacity that I do. Because they absolutely have things like beholders, uh, liches, uh, and uh, just a lot, almost every monster in Dungeons and Dragons, in some capacity, appears yeah. in world, in in some other property. It's 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 inspired so many goddamn I mean, things at this point. something happening, but what? Uh, accent turn-based mode. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, shadows, and a couple wraiths, or one. Oh, huh. The Medusa effect, nice. Ultimately, I uh, I guess I just am a I'm a huge fan of high fantasy and or um, sci-fi. And if one thing is in, uh, able to kind of give me into or like create a a well put together setting either in sci-fi where you're utilizing actual science um in a because like you know how high fantasy creates its own logic to the world and functions based on that logic and like an entirely different set of uh rules of, or laws of physics like sci-fi that totally. does that with science and like totally totally like uh classic science fiction was particularly well or adept at that like a uh, Niven's original works were able to kind of, uh, they created something called a ramjet fusion engine, which utilized, uh, technique, or, like, uh, mathematical equations for calculating the amount of hydrogen that existed within space, uh, right. to calculate that it theoretically would be possible to propel a spaceship to a certain speed and then create collection, uh, ports that would allow for hydrogen to be kind of rammed into this kind of fusion engine that it would then perpetually power itself based on the ambient gases that exist within the cosmos. And and it, it was found to be like, we only have a quarter of the hydrogen in the universe that we thought, so that wouldn't work. But based on the science of the day, it would have. Yeah. And that is what really astounds me with this stuff, is when people actually kind of get into it and they pay a lot of attention to detail, it's 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 really just it creates uh such wonderfully put together uh rules now the ring world series by book three turned into uh it like each book gets progressively hornier and hornier and you have just like human adjacent species fucking each other called uh doing something called rishathra uh and it's like the way it's like one of the primary diplomatic things of all these uh humanoid species that are the offshoot of like the parent uh humanoid species like the they're called the pack and they go to all these worlds and like uh, eventually the pack die out and it's just people they left behind on all these worlds thinking that they're all completely different but really they're just cousins and the cousins all fuck uh let's i, I do want to see if larry niven grew up in the south because that would be hilarious now that I'm thinking of it. Oh no, he was born in California. Damn. I mean, that's south, technically. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I guess South California. On where. Most games are fantasy, I, I would say. But, like, I suppose when I mean high fantasy, I mean like fantasy to a degree where it's not just like your typical sword and board, like, uh, because like doing some other analog, like, uh, uh, that is just like, what if it was the 1300s, but slightly different? Oh, what if it was the 1300s, but with a dragon? And it's yeah. like, 
that gets old after a while, in my opinion. But if you have a kind of like a fantasy world that is willing to kind of create and abide by uh, an alternate uh, like rule set for how the world operates, and you can kind of uh, see like really well developed stories start to mm -hmm. it, like. I guess it is really just dependent on the uh, narrative quality of the content. Totally. I don't see where they are. They're invisible right now, aren't they? Oh, blended right into them shadows. I want to play with two dads now because I can't friggin' do anything. And I'll a lot of shooters me. are like war sim games. They're like, uh, yeah. or like uh, they're battle royales or. There, there is some. There is a decent amount of variety within shooter games. I will give them that. But what am I supposed to do against this fucking thing? I think if we have a light source as a cleric, you should be able to cast the light spell, and it might reveal them. Uh, I don't believe I took the light spell. Oh, uh, did I take the light spell? Stand in my way. And I got a freaking. Bye forever, pal. It's not lit. Gosh. I revealed one. No heretic in thirty years, though. Is Heretic a video game series that, uh, on the plus side, no hexing for 25 years? <laughs> that one I am familiar with, and fuck. Where's the one you revealed? It's right there. Heretic is like high fantasy doom. Heretic was a boomer shooter generation, uh, was in uh, wizard spells instead of guns. I, I do have a particular affinity for those uh, shooter games where they're wizard spells instead of guns. I, I always thought that they were kind of uh, kind of few and far between in terms of quality. Yeah. A distant memory of a man stretching his back with a groan. Another day of hauling masonry blocks done. That's one thing that's really cool about each of the shadows that you fight are they're they're shadows of former people. Let's see what this does. Uh, so the masons uh, that uh, constructed the moonlight tower did not have a, or moonrise did not have a fun time. <laughs> Traps, how considerate. Uh, disarm first. So Kethric Thorm used to be a Selenite priest. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then turned to uh, Shar worship when his wife and daughter died. Because, yeah, the god of loss is gonna help you regain something. Dumbass. Right. Helmet of Arcane Acuity. You deal fire damage. You do stuff. Carlock? Ah, uh, go for it, yeah. No, it's whenever you deal damage with a weapon attack. Oh, then... Put would a throwing strain. a weapon at somebody be a weapon attack? Yes, it doesn't specify melee, but I put it on Astarian, because he's... He's got, well, he's got like, offhand and mainhand attacks. Right, he just... Alright, so it looks like this is a, uh... Closed-in dungeon.
one of the things I liked about Ghostwire Tokyo, yeah, that that was another that was I think the the biggest mm -hmm. modern example of like a spell shooter, uh, in that totally. kind of like first person style, and I I Wait, really about, did enjoy it. Does this door not open? There's not a door there. Never mind. Wait, did you take the elevator or the iron ladder? I took the elevator. Do they lead to the same place? Should. Yes. Ooh. Now there's a there's a couple different places we can go north, uh, or I guess west or south. Which one for you? Mm, let's let. It's uh, like Tomb of Shar decide. or Toll House of the Dead. You said northeast or south. That's I guess northwest or south. Oh. West it is. The dice have determined. Going west? enemies over there. Medieval is like a modern heretic, but with crazier level design. EA made a spell shooter last year, but everyone forgot about it already. Oof. I'm gonna write that down, though. Uh, a mid. That looks like a... Or sounds just... Or a medieval. Sounds like a fun game. Just by the title. Especially if it's a spell shooter. I mean, how am I... Can't wait till I get that second bonus action from three levels in Thief or Rogue. <laughs> from the second gen of FPS games, but, uh, but the System Shock remake is out for consoles now. Uh, anyone played the original? I, I did not.
feel like uh, Carlock gets a nice amount of kills. I'm yes. really happy with her throw everything build. Spears, uh -huh. axes, potions, people. Ghosts. Right. Neighbors would not renounce Saluna. Now they hang in the town square. There's something about these plaques. And goddess of light. Of all? Not Char? I'm done. I can't wait to sleep. Is there an order to push Okay. Them we need to... Uh, I think it's that one, that one. There we go. Cursor has no effect here. What is this place? Wait, uh, oh. Do we want a short rest? Oh, yeah, why not? Than fresh. I haven't either, but System Shock is one of those foundational genre games, or at least the second one is uh, classic. I'm excited, uh, I'm excited to finally be able to play. You know, Bioshock was a direct spiritual successor to System Shock, at least with some of the same team. I didn't know that. That makes me actually want to play it more because Bioshock 1 and to some extent 2 and to a better extent Infinite were pretty fucking great games. Now you used to actually be able to have Char as like an option that you could choose. Uh, like it was like, I'm really kind of wondering why they didn't allow you to be Shar, like a priest of Shar, like uh, Shadowheart is. Wait, do they? What? Because that's like uh, trickster domain cleric, right? Oh wait, no, that's not your god. They don't. Yeah, they don't let you pick Shar. Only Saluna. No, I don't think so. Think yourself wise enough to be granted Shah's blessing. So as a cleric, you've just got like uh, advantage on all these tests. It's just extra dialogue options, I think, but Well, because it's giving you situational uh well. advantage. Got it. I didn't even realize that. Okay, let's see this one. I do think situational advantage is something that is a really good, uh, like, DMs yeah, very frequently do that if a character is able to make a good enough petition. Or at least, I'm, I'm prone to do that. Uh, I don't have much to this. Any chance you can toss up? Oh, you did. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness for advantage. You feel a small pulse of energy. Well, and that's the thing. Uh, stealing Shadow Hearts right. Thunder, I could understand that. Um, yeah. Ooh, if we uh, do, we want to go get Shadow Heart for this Dagger of Shar. Yeah, probably. All right, Carlatch, you're gonna you're gonna have to stay in camp. We need to get Sad Priest. <laughs> Shar's blessings upon you. Your dance card is full. Lead the way. Oh, level up. 
Shadow Heart, when is the last time? Okay, so she's got two levels. <laughs> A plus five bonus to intelligence, a plus five to wisdom, and a plus five to charisma until long rest. We're never long resting. Now level eight. Also, System Shock retails at forty bucks on uh, day one launch. Okay. The altar's purpose is unclear, uh -oh. but the dagger upon it. I maybe should have looked at that. Uh, can I have Shadowheart do it? An altar to Shah. It appears to seek prey and a blood offering. Your blood. Ah. Thank you, Char. What about these two? Oh, shit. I guess I probably should have, uh... Oh. Instead of the 70 most games go for now. Man, Black Myth is going to be yeah. crazy if it rocks the industry at 40. Wait, Black Myth Wu Wukong is... It's only going to be 40? Yeah, that, that really would rock the industry. Because so far, it's given every indication that it looks like it's going to be uh, AAA. And yeah, but it, but it's supposed to only be 40 bucks, and it looks as triple. Yeah, it, it's, it's so incredibly polished, visually at least. And the systems demonstrations that they've uh, shown, or at least for like some of the UIs and like the crafting system, it, it does look genuinely interesting. So I'm, I'd be really surprised if it comes out at forty and ends up like, I, uh, I mean, shit. I, I'm always loving to see more things get. Uh...
I like that Sword Bard gets a slashing flourish that they can use with their bow and shoot two arrows, uh, giving them potentially, what is it, like five attacks per turn? That's really cool. Did you guys hear that super pigs are getting bigger and smarter? What? What? You're gonna have to give me a lot more information with super pigs. Pig soldiers, like the Doctor Who episode with the Empire State Building and Daleks. Super pigs general. Oh uh, yeah, we got full on super pig war on full blat. I don't know shit about super pigs. This is the first time I'm here. I knew feral hogs were like a thing that people were like <laughs> joking about, but also like that are kind of a problem, but not really, but also kind of. Tell me about super pigs. Super pigs are a crossbreed of domestic pig and wild boar created by the Canadian government when they, they uh, that, that then escaped into the wild. Ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> so they're like intelligent and strong. That. There's no way that could go terribly for humanity. Nice. Yeah, Shadowheart is like uh like as a life cleric is incredibly good at debuffing and support and doing uh bits of damage. I just step forward. Uh, uh, clerics, uh, I'm surprised I've never played one in like actual D&D &D because they have a lot of uh, like a real a lot of really fun things in their toolkit. Yeah, I tend not to play support, but they do seem quite fun. Like I'm fond of druids and those are a controller class and if clerics are more of the support. I have to cast a every single turn, 10 turn. No, it, yeah, it should be 10 turns. Though I <laughs> I will. I usually allow like uh, in tabletop games that like sh shillelaghs until long rest, because like yeah. having to say like every like one minute. All right, I recast shillelagh. Uh, they're considerably larger and tougher than normal pigs in some places. They're apex predators capable of hunting down deer. Largest so far is 800 pounds. Canada was hoping to freeze to death, but the pigs built igloos to survive the winters. Of course they did. Of course they're smart enough to build fucking igloos. <laughs> One day I'll catch a break. Planet of the Pigs, man. I wonder if this sentinel... Did any of the sentinels have anything useful? No. Are we going up? Yep. And I guess I'll probably keep Shadowheart with us for the time being, because... Yeah. 
I guess we are in the Lady, uh, like Lady Shar land. They're spreading into the U.S. now and are tearing up the environment everywhere they go. They raid farms to steal food and small livestock. And I imagine they gotta be, like, because I know we do require a certain amount of large, uh, mammals that trample the forest floor and stuff as they go because that churns uh, roots and stuff, it, or like churns the soil, it, it helps for, uh, seeds get planted, it helps uh, smaller foliage get uh, eaten and stuff or uh, killed to make room for other foliage. It's, it's a really essential part of the environment. But if you do it too much... You don't want too much of it, yeah, exactly. You don't till every day you're farming, just when you're planting. Uh, do we want to cut left here? Yeah, let's, let's keep this trend of west. We'll clear out this main road. Or whatever the fuck is building. left of it. House of Healing. I also... It's getting close. Oops. I hate that. It is getting close to 10. I don't know how much... We might be able to finish this in about 15 minutes. Cool. Sounds good. Desperately poorly. Oh, not so well. But well enough to wait. Join the line, and you will be seen. Hunters are being paid to shoot them from helicopters, but the pigs have learned to hide in dense forests um, in the day and only come out at night when the helicopters can't spot them. They've also started figuring out how to help each other escape from traps. Wow. Be patient. Be well. Some Silent Hill-ass nurse. Right. You're not sick. Not sick at all. Oh, not so well. But well enough. Oh. She'll teleport us back here over and over and over again. Bring it quiet. Oh, if we go in? If we, uh, we, I guess we could probably sneak in. Lots of potions of... Hate to see the so well. Join the line. You will be seen. <laughs> you got some good options. Hired as a new healer. That's my best. Oh, persuasion. Tim, thoughts on that Silent Hill footage uh, since you were a big player of the original back in the day? Holy shit. Does it not? It, uh, there were places where I thought that it would look entirely different, but they managed to get, I think, a lot of the same visual tone down really down right to the, to the point where I think it's an elevation or it's one of those cases where a remake turns into a pure elevation of the source material mm -hmm. go down to the theater uh come to my attention that our so-called caregivers are wasting precious anesthetic on the elderly and mortally wounded uh, the nurse informs me this practice eases the suffering of the feeble and guides them to Our Lady's final embrace. Never have I heard such abject nonsense. Anesthesia is a tool uh, to relieve my ears. The subject screams as I apply the blade, not a mercy to be freely dispersed to living corpses. So say a Shar, only in the infirm suffering may we forget our own. So, uh, this temple had kind of give, uh, originally started as Saluna, as you're able to see from, like, the stained glass uh, windows and stuff. And even on some of the stonework depicted over the store, uh, doorways. But uh, much as everything in this, uh, they were kind of forced to kind of switch over to uh, uh, worshipping Shar, lest they be hung in the town square. Artificial leech. That's horrifying. House appealing staff pool foreign body must be lodged in redacted cavity. Uh, once a guess is made, it may not be made again. Minimum bet one gold. Round one bets, uh, uh, they thought they were like taking bets as to what people had gotten stuck up in them. Uh -oh. uh, chicken, wine bottle, carrot, candlestick, ogre finger. The candlestick was the winner. Live rat, children's doll, pearl necklace, marbles, potato, minotaur horn. Live rat was the winner. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this goddamn game. So horny. But also, uh, that is. I go down into the theater like I was told to do. Do it. The 
objective oh. of the Scalpel Sisters is to soothe. For the Scalpel indeed is an extension of Sha. It's a, it's See a... how the patient reacts when I but stroke the right nerve. Yeah, if I feel about it, the game is such a serious and sad story, it will really benefit from the upgraded presentation. If you're hung in the town square, you're hung everywhere. <laughs> this is Edward's scalpel hands. He's very different. Um, I was going to say, uh, like, a wannabe Cenobite. Stop. Stay your hand, for it slaps where it should stroke. We can hardly hear the patient's sighs of solace. Perhaps it is our unexpected audience that makes you quiver. Come, step forward. You are no sister, but that matters none. Every student is welcome. Absence. Absence. No other word captures the heart of Shah so very perfectly. It is the scalpel-led journey that leads from pain to peace. He's just like Cathedral. Utterly insane. Yes, yes, we'll See? kill him here. What is the light of eyes but the cancer that causes one to witness the laceration of being? I love that they how they depict some of the fanatics where they're just kind of saying shit that sounds absolutely nuts yeah. and is absolutely nuts. If you say enough words, sometimes it sounds like you really have a meaning behind your words. Right. <laughs> yeah. In light is presence. In darkness, absence. You are well on your way, but one white orb disfigures you still. Let us finish the cure. <laughs> it's making a reference of your uh your one eye being missing. Mm -hmm. You remember a Sharon Maxim. Go forth and sow doubt, but do not compel it. For only the willing may know the lady's embrace. Hmm. Only the willing may know the lady's embrace. You know her teaching well. This and yet Shadow Heart impressed with me. Sisters must exercise their gifts, for the art of absence lies in its execution. How to proceed? I want I your wonder. goggles. I do want those goggles. Yeah, they, they look pretty cool. <laughs> I should have given you bardic no. inspiration, but it wouldn't have helped, would have I suppose. I guess you could try, uh... There is misdirection oh, in your I didn't words. see we had one. I forgot. We, seek to we have four. In your sickness. Sisters! The scalpel soothes, comes in its song. We would hear your melody of mercy. Oh. Too many elbows. There's too many elbows. If you would have passed that, they would have all, uh, or all of, I think, four of the sisters would have uh, killed each other. But yeah. even still, it's hilarious that, that that is an option, that you can convince them by their own god's doctrine right. to, uh... Oh, Malice Thorn. 
so he's probably related to Kethric Thorm in some regard. Explains why they trans uh, transferred over to uh, Shar worship so quickly. I mean, that and the yeah. threat of execution. I mean, that really gets the get up and go in my step. <laughs> Spell slots left only at my highest level. Unfortunate. I can't hit more than three or two of them at a, at a time with it. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, that hit. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> and it did the most damage to him. That's oh, alright. For just wearing cloth dresses, they have a lot of AC. Yeah. Right. Is that both of us? Shit. Got to move. Oh fuck. Nice. Is an AC both armor and dodge ability or something? Yeah, uh, AC is essentially like you have uh, you roll a twenty sided dice, and you or your total is uh, that roll plus whatever your attack modifier is, which is usually like if you're using a strength weapon, you, how strong you are, and how proficient you are with that weapon added onto that roll. So like to beat a thirteen, relatively simple. But some enemies have like an AC of like 22, so you have like a 10 or a 15% chance to hit them unless you have a certain efficiency. So I can understand 100% where Larry and developers are coming from when they say they felt stifled by the, uh... Wow, it missed and it's still stunned her. That's three people stunned. Phenomenal. Uh, but Larian said they felt stifled by the D20 system and how they they had a lot of really cool ideas that they weren't able to properly execute because you know, uh, it's like, oh, well, we can't do that in combat because that doesn't adhere to what D&D is like. Right. Homelander from the Boys is dropping in Mortal Kombat on Tuesday. Nice, nice. And I think we've gotten a gameplay trailer of that too, which was really kind of cool to see how they're differentiating them from what Superman uh, plays like. Right. And I think how different they're making them from like Omni Man. Mm hmm. Oof. I'll pop you up. They've gotten so many fucking stuns in. They uh, three paralyzes and a confusion. Oh yeah, I can't pop you up. Oh good, 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 good. I have everything. Nice, nice. His intro has him tongue-fucking a bottle of milk. That's- that's great. 
Yeah. All I know is a pet leopard has a sky high AC in the Pathfinder games, and it's just a cat, so I imagine it's Matrix dodging every attack. Yeah, it's armor class is is either determined to be it's a one or two based things. It's on that one, I think. Yeah, like a uh, if you're wearing like light or no armor, uh, it's dexterity. Uh, it, or like how dexterous you are determines how your likeliness to get hit. If you're wearing like heavy armor, then it becomes like, uh, like how strong your armor is, and medium armor is kind of like some sort of uh, blending of the two. Yeah, and your disadvantage on stealth with heavy armor, and minus one to stealth. Some stealth from some medium armors, but not others. If I remember. No zombies? God damn. Alright. Nice. 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 Seriously. Oh. oh, and he can resurrect her. So, uh, I guess we've got to focus that prick down. Uh oh. And he's got an 18 AC. Just a lovely yeah. fucker. I'll do a full cure wounds on you this time. No. Ah. Uh, harsh. Well. Nice. Fire, cold, or lightning? Probably fire, right? Ooh. 
resistances, fire resistance, bludgeoning and slashing and piercing. And magic resistance. So I actually don't know what he's not resistant to. He is resistant to fire. And... And most um, melee damages. Yeah. Non-magical uh, so melee. I can start doing radiant. Although I only have one spell slot left, and I need to save that for healing. Oh, I forget that she is. Well, how's Shadow Heart's spell slots doing? Those were just both of uh, like those big bursts are channel divinities. So she's she's still got some. Nice. Multiverse is finally fully launched for real this time. Yeah, I've uh, I dove into a, a little bit uh, yesterday uh, for the first time since it launched, and it 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 was it was pretty. It was it's got improvements definitely for sure, 100% over its original iteration. But I think it's uh it's one of those things where it's like. I really think they're trying to get every drop of profitability out of it to the point where totally. it it's it suffered. Yeah. And uh what is it? If you uh past unlocking your first uh character, it's like what 77 hours of playtime if you want to unlock a character oh. organically. <laughs> Just fucking That's bonkers. Wild. Yeah, keep him busy resurrecting him. Yeah, that's the idea. And here she goes. <laughs> come on, Sister Hana, come into melee range. This is not, not, not like 10,000 hours like Diablo Immortal or something. Oh, Jesus fucking hell. Yeah. Gameplay itself works but just fine, but the monetization is really bad. Played some today. Oh! Oh, uh, yeah. That it's, it's, it's a... It is solid as long as you commit fastly to not having everything unless you really feel the urge to spend $250. Right. Um... I think it was nice that they let everyone from beta keep everything that they unlocked. I mean, if cool. they hadn't, uh, I'd have been really pissed, but... Because uh, they, they didn't really do much to make it seem like a... Uh, like, it, they didn't really show that like this was going to be uh, like a, a temporary period. Right. Nice. 
or a thousand hours like Diablo 4. No, it, Diablo 4 was just a disappointment with the inclusion of the battle pass and making seasons like a like if you want to engage in any seasonal content, it used to be like in Diablo 3, you you could still do most of it with your character. Um, like if you made a new character and you leveled it all the way up, you got a bunch of bonus rewards, but it was kind of optional. It wasn't mandatory or anything. Now it's it does very much so feel that way, and it's it's Mr. kind of Lily is going away every single turn. That's so fucking weird. Right. Oh no, it's not showing up at all on the... I have too many things, maybe? Possibly? You have so many notable features. I have the Dark Ladies... stuff. <laughs> Got oh, Dark Ladies stuff. Come on, Astarian. Do it. I do groan anytime I see a battle pass. Yeah! Yeah, yeah because I want to be able to own a game. Into battle pass and it sucks now. You never get any new skins or loot or anything even on a game like that. Yeah. Ooh. What did I get? Or what did we get? There's a loot here that's going to you. Oh! Saw is ready. What's hiding here? I found a bone saw. <laughs> and a syringe dagger. When scoring a crit, you can... Uh, uh, amulet, when scoring a crit... You can paralyze the target for two turns. Who do we want that? Carlock? Um, Does she have the 18, 19, or 19, 20 crit? I think, yeah. Okay. Astarian has that, uh, that under dark, or under mountain dagger. I mean, I feel like we should be able to heal him first, right? Wait, I don't see that dagger. If you try talking to him, he just says... Later. Oh, he vanished. Did you say Astarian has a shadow dagger? Oh no, uh, Astarian has um, a knife of the Undermountain King, which makes it uh, so that he, he can uh, crit on a 19 or oh, 20. Oh, I see, I see. Also, I just realized uh, you have the light ring on, which or a ring that gives you the light spell as a cantrip. On uh, Kallus. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't take it. That's why it wasn't uh, on my cleric stuff. It's on my common. Yeah, there it is. Now, uh, they had said that uh, the guy seemed to respond a little bit when he heard the sound of a loot, but it didn't do much. Um, and that we had to look for anything pertaining to his old life. Well, I just picked up a quest item that it says battered loot, a uh, loot with the initials AC oh, I, yeah, meticulously carved. And that loot, uh, and the initials match the guy who's been laid up in the last light in, uh, where we've been oh. looking for anything that might bring him out of it, a uh, tether to this world. So, so, uh, when we next we start, it. uh, or the, or the stream, we're going to start off in the last light in, uh, with Halzen and uh, the guy whose name I've already forgot. But 
Uh, let's see. Uh, they should at least stay in free-to-play game. Uh, seeing one in a game you already had to buy is just insulting. Oh, yeah. Diablo 4 being a $70 fucking game. And then having a battle pass. And then also having That's a cash shop with microtransactions. On top of that, it's fucking uh, insane. And when you open the launcher... Shit there's advertisements there and when you log in oh it's like oh God. did you want to see this and when you open the menu it's like oh hey did you there's new deals in the cash shop and i'm like holy shit the diablo 3 cash shop was innocuous it had a few items and it was out of the way you could ignore it really easily in diablo 4 it's much more in your fucking face sometimes i'll open the menu and it'll default to the uh the the shop i haven't played in a few months I haven't played since like a couple months after it came out because I, I burned right the fuck out on it. I didn't get to max level because at level 40 you stop earning new abilities and shit. And then oh. you have 60 levels of just kind of, oh, you're getting stronger. And then you start getting new armor and it modifies the way your abilities work. And it's like, cool, that's kind of like what Diablo 3 did. Only Diablo 3 had like, I feel like twice as many abilities on any given class. So it's oh. just kind of asinine. Anyway, yeah. who the shit are we rating tonight? Hmm. Who do be on? Let's see, Ash versus Evil Bread? Yeah, I don't have any of my channels that I see. We're the only live one. Diablo definitely went down the shitty uh, Ulysses. Uh, and, I, and I could spend an entire stream talking about how disappointing the descent from the height and glory of three, uh, two to uh like what three ended up as versus what three started as and what four did and how they kind of completely ignored some of the lessons from three's spectacularly botched launch uh it's it's kind of sad uh that they just did not learn from their own lessons mm -hmm. Um, but thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to everyone who's, uh, watching right now and who's watching the VOD later. I hope you're sleeping well because you have this on as background noise, or I hope you feel like, uh, I don't know, like you just stayed for two hours watching something that was worthwhile. Uh, <laughs> if, if, uh, anybody chimed in in chat, we got Ulysses Sage. Say hello, Sarah, uh, afternoon tune. And... Uh, I think that was it for today, but there's always room for more in chat. We always love having good conversation with people. Absolutely. So uh, thank you to everyone that did. Thank you to everyone who isn't. Say hello to Ash vs. Evil Bread and tune in next Friday uh, for more co-host takeover and tomorrow evening uh, for Rapid Respawn uh, awesome. at 1030 uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, but have a good one or else and uh yeah that's that's kind of it raid come on raid <laughs> <laughs>